Welcome to the Faster, Easier, Better show. This podcast is short, fun, and jam-packed with good ideas that you can start using right away. Welcome to another episode. I'm your co-host, Ellen, along with my co-host, Lee Silver, and I'm just going to let it go. Okay, which is perfect because today is the seventh episode of our seven-part series on the unconventional habits used by highly efficient people. Number seven, let go. Tell us about letting go, Lee. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of things that we need to let go of in the, you know, trying to be perfect, trying to make other people like us, letting go of the fear of missing out, letting go of, uh, you know, making sure that everyone is happy around us, letting go of things that we can't control, letting go of stuff. I mean, I could go on, but highly efficient people get it. They let things go. Something that isn't serving them anymore, something that's not working, something that just doesn't help them get where they want to go, gone. Sounds harsh. Sounds a little, a little, you know, extreme. But <laughs> uh, I was trying to think of another word. I was wondering where you were going with that. <laughs> but I'm just going to let it go. Yeah. Uh, but th- no. it is a, it is a fact that highly efficient people, you know, you could waste a lot of time dwelling on things in the past that you cannot change. You can waste a lot of time worrying about things in the future that you can't control. When we focus on, hey, I'm here now. I'm doing the best I can. I'm in 100% of what I'm doing. You know, I'm all in. Man, that's just a good place to be. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Letting go and care of caring what other people think about you. That's a huge one because, you know, someone's always going to criticize you, someone somewhere, whether whether it's someone you know or not. And so when you can let go of, of that, that's huge. When you can let go of emotional baggage, also huge. There's just so many things. I mean, it's not just physical. Can I let go of those old books I have? Well, yeah. Yeah, I can. Well, then do it. You know? Sometimes the physical and the mental, I guess, uh, go together. Yeah. It, meaning, like, yeah. you know, what will people think if I get rid of this super expensive car that I really can't afford and you know needs a lot of maintenance and takes a lot of my time because I have to work extra hours to pay for it and I have to you know take it into the shop all the time, which isn't efficient. But if I let it go, will people think, oh man, he's on his way down. What happened to yeah. his career? If you didn't worry about what people thought, a lot of things would be much easier to let go. This is true. This is true. Uh, you'd be able to to do different things. I mean, I think about years and years ago when I stopped being a graphic artist. I didn't tell people. I didn't tell people for a year because I'm, I was afraid what they would think of me letting go of, of a career that I'd had for so long. But you know what? People do it every day. Why couldn't I do it? You know, when I fig- once I figured that out, it was like, boom, bye-bye. Bye-bye, old me. Hello, new me. And there we are. Well, you know, there's that book, The Millionaire Next Door. And basically Uh what they found is a lot of those people don't drive fancy cars. They don't have expensive, super expensive houses. They're, you know, they live within their means. And they don't worry what other people might think because they know I'm rich. (laughs) (laughs) But they don't, they're not showy. And I just think that sometimes if we could just say to ourselves, imagine what you could do if you said, I don't care what people think if I try this and I fail. Or if I, you know, if I fall on my face, so what? If we, what would we try if we knew that nobody would would care, or we're not worried about what people would think of us? Man, there's so many, so, we have so much more potential to try new things and to, to stretch ourselves if we just didn't worry so much about what people think. So when we talk about letting go, you know, letting go of the outcome, letting go of fear and worry, letting go of things that are holding you back so that you can move ahead and do things in the coming year that you hadn't done in the past, that would be such a great way to end the seven habits is that you know you find yourself in 2023 doing things, trying things, um, you know, experimenting with things that haven't you haven't done before because you're not so worried about what people think and you're just going to let go of what may be and ho- hope for the best, right? And just if it doesn't work out, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. And remember, like letting go of the good, maybe you've got a good deal going, but if you let go of the good, you might be able to get to the great. And that is 
very efficient. You know, becoming great at whatever you want when you let go of what's good. A lot of times people think, you know, in the spring is spring cleaning. But some people also, you know, during this, the break of the holidays, you know, it, and it sometimes stretches all the way into, you know, mid-January, right, mm-hmm. when, you're, when you're listening to this. Um, and so sometimes it is, you know, okay to use that time to just go through and say, what doesn't serve me anymore, and to let it go. This is the beginning, the new year. It's a it's a new start. So maybe it is the time to shed some things that are taking up your time and help keeping you from being as efficient as you could be. I've got nothing more to add to that except that's the conclusion of our seven part series. And the thing is, we have put together an infographic that you can get from us either as a PDF or a postcard. Put it up on a on your refrigerator, put it on a bulletin board, put it somewhere where you can see it all year long and and become one of those efficient people by using unconventional habits. Be back with us next week for another episode. 